entrepreneurship in driving positive change. We are delighted to have you all join us once again as we continue our exploration of this fascinating topic. Indeed, it's wonderful to see familiar faces and new participants joining us today. And we hope you have. Jyotika Shehra, a social entrepreneur on a mission to empower women in India's workforce. As the CEO of Srujna, a non-profit platform enabling women to earn a respectable income, Jyotika has made significant strides in creating economic opportunities for women across India. With a background in international development and social entrepreneurship, she brings a unique perspective to her work. Jyotika's dedication to creating income opportunities for women and her impact-driven approach has earned her recognition as a leader in the field. Next up, we have Ms. Martha Valent, a catalyst for positive change and the founder of Co Goodwill, a social enterprise dedicated to boosting shared prosperity. With a background in mergers and acquisitions and a passion for social impact, she has led initiatives to address societal challenges and promote inclusive growth. Her innovative approach to social entrepreneurship, coupled with her commitment to corporate social responsibility, has garnered widespread acclaim, and her dedication to creating meaningful social impact has positioned her as a leader in the field of regenerative leadership. Next up, we have none other than Ms. Sai Priyanka, a dynamic entrepreneur and social impact architect dedicated to driving positive change through strategic consulting. As the co-founder of Arth Samarthi Consultancy LLP, Sai Priyanka, specializes in crafting corporate social responsibility strategies and supporting NGOs. With a background in finance and social innovation, she brings a unique blend of expertise to her work. Ms. Priyanka's commitment to leveraging businesses for social good and a passion for empowering communities has earned a recognition as a leader in the field of social impact consulting. Introducing our next speaker, Ms. Madhvi Jha Prasad, a visionary entrepreneur and philanthropist committed to preserving India's rich heritage, culture, and as the founder of Ahana Heritage Foundation, she has embarked on a mission to celebrate and promote traditional art forms and craftsmanship. With a deep appreciation for India's diverse cultural tapestry, Ms. Madhvi's work aims to foster a deeper connection between people and the country's heritage. Through her advocacy efforts and collaborative projects, she seeks to raise awareness about the invaluable contributions of artisans and craftsmen, and her dedication to preserving India's artistic legacy has positioned her as a leading figure in the cultural preservation. Our final speaker for today is none other than C. A. Arpit Khetan, a seasoned chartered accountant and managing partner of firm SSLA Chartered Accountants, bringing a wealth of expertise in audit, taxation and advisory services. With a keen focus on leveraging technology and advocating for financial literacy, Arpit has played a pivotal role in modernizing operations and strengthening services. As a passionate speaker and contributor to various publications, he is dedicated to simplifying complex topics and empowering others with knowledge. Mr. Arpit's commitment to inclusive growth and transformative leadership has earned him recognition as a driving force in the accounting profession. We are grateful for all of your presence and eagerly anticipate your valuable insights and contributions to tonight's conference panelists. We would also like to inform all of you that the HR team is conducting polls in the chat box throughout the session. We encourage active participation from all the attendees in the polls. Moving ahead, I would like to invite Ms. Meghna Joshi to share her perspectives today with us. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, I'll just share my screen. I've prepared a short presentation uh, for today. Um, I hope my screen is visible. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, it is. Okay, great. 
so uh, the topic of my discussion is social entrepreneurship for a sustainable future cultivating regenerative leadership and uh, you know i would like to start by uh, you know stating the journey of a social entrepreneur which is more about overcoming the fears because you know largely it's the journey uh, it's a road not taken you have to delve into your ideas uh, the things that you are passionate about alone and you know soon you start seeing people joining you in your journey and uh, when i talk about uh, you know the uh, space of entrepreneurship or social entrepreneurship it is also about building something and it starts from identifying the problem and also you know innovating a solution wherein uh, you know uh, to to solve the given problem and hence the process goes like you know defining your product your which starts from your idea which you are very very passionate about uh, how problem solving you are because it's all about uh, you know the cause for which you are working be it related to the society or the environment also your customer base because ultimately whatever product or your service that you make or create or innovate that will be purchased by the customer or your target audience so until and unless you are clear on your target audience uh, there is a less likely chance that you will be able to sell your product and also it at the same time it is very very important for an an entrepreneur to understand the pain point of the customer so until and unless you dig deeper into the problem of the customers you will fail to understand what exactly are you know the requirements and you will not be able to create an appropriate uh, service or the product that you are working on also at the same time when we talk about social entrepreneurship it's not charity it's also about defining a revenue model something that you are co-creating which does not exist and also uh, how are you solving the problems how are you catering to the pain points of your target audience so that they are ready to pay you for it and uh, most importantly the team the team that you build because uh, you know even though it's your idea you are working on something but finding like minded people is equally good because you cannot land up doing everything all alone uh, the chances of you getting burned out uh, will be more hence uh, you know when we talk about social entrepreneurship it's a human centered process which is more about empathizing with uh, the human perspectives uh, getting into the shoes shoes of the people or the problem that you are working on and trying to you know innovate in in the process to come up with a new pr- a product or a service and in your journey you are going to see a lot of people who would say that you know hey how is it that you are going to help us and on the other hand you will be there uh, you know always questioning what is it that you are trying to solve so you know this question will continue to go on until and unless you refine get your thoughts streamlined and you hit on ground with your prototype which will ultimately be solving the problems of the people so hence uh, the entire process starts by feeling you have to actually feel for the cause or the problem that you are working on you have to be very very passionate about because then only you will be able to carry forward your idea you have to imagine it's all about imagining and also listing up, listing down all the possible ideas that you may have in your mind at the initial stage and then streamlining your thoughts so that you are able to pick up with one or two solution that you would go forward with now you know brainstorming everything with your colleagues or in your mind is not sufficient until and unless you do or actually implement the task that you are working on and hence you know getting uh, your thoughts into action or implementing your thought ideas into action comes very very important and lastly sometimes we feel very hesitant to share our stories or maybe the work that we have been doing it's equally important for one to share you know their experiences their ideas the questions that they may may be having in their mind when they are on their journey of building their enterprise because you never know who may like who may resonate with your idea you may never know you may find investors you may never know you may find your mentors in the process of sharing your stories with the audience and last Clearly, it is also about reflection because until and unless you reflect on the work that you have done, you reflect on the product that you have built, you reflect on your journey, or you reflect on your services. It's a very, very so. Reflecting helps you to actually reiterate the entire process that you have 
gone through while building your process and there may be a lot of more ideas which you may get in your mind which will further help you to refine your next prototype that you will launch in the market now saying that i to followed this step and that's what led to the journey of my startup and uh, we started off in the year of 2020 when we focused uh, our programs focused on youth employability and upskilling uh, catering to the underprivileged section of the society and also training uh, the children who came from the slum communities and in turn providing employment opportunities uh, in the retail sectors across delhi and cr region uh, when covid hit during uh, 2021 we were able to expand further expand our operations online by also starting or catering to the college students who fe we felt were very very confused during that time and during that time we also further expanded our operations by you know um, diversifying into our experiential learning and mentoring workshops which focused on the concept of design thinking and also creative thinking in 2022 we further collaborated with governments uh, also organizations to conduct capacity building sessions uh, this was both for the grassroots as well as for uh, the youth leaders who were working at the grassroots level and in 2023 onwards with the work which uh, for which you know it continues we further ex expanded our portfolio by uh, launching programs to make the villages the rural villages self sufficient because during the time of covid we realized that the migration that had taken place was focusing more on how can we uh, you know make the villages the rural villages self sufficient and uh, hence we launched a program to help the rural women across uh, different areas of haryana uh, uttar pradesh uttarakhand Uh, so that with whatever skills they have they are able to set up their own micro enterprises and also they are able to earn a sustainable livelihood opportunity through 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 the same uh now yes now saying that uh, you know on one hand uh, social uh, entrepreneurship plays a very very important role because you know we are continuously reiterating on our ideas on our processes and also working to build our venture forward which goes in line with the problems that one is observing and also the how how the environment behaves and that that's where that's when the concept of sustainability comes in when we talk about sustainability it is also about you know what is the larger goal where do you see yourself how do you see yourself evolving and what's like the social goal uh, that you want the people to coexist uh, with you know a mutual synergy between the work that you are doing and also the environment in which or the ecosystem in which you are working and over here the concept of sustainable development goals plays a very very important role because you know uh, during the time of covid we realized that you know almost all the goals all the su uh, 17 sustainable goals defined by the united nations got impacted a lot the people i mean the people below the poverty line were actually suffering they did not have food to eat which you know connects to the zero hunger the government was distributing rations then also the health factor was impacted during covid schools and colleges were shut down which in turn you know impacted the quality education and you know similarly all the goals were linked to one another and we saw that you know the goal number 7 which talks about partnerships for the goal played a very very important role because we saw that a lot of collaborations a lot of you know inter field synergies were actually explored so that you know people could come together in order to help out each other and uh, until and unless we integrate uh, the sustainable development goals into our work uh, particularly focusing on collaborating between different uh, industries three partners and also working together um i feel that you know there is a less likely chance that we can all achieve the work in seclusion with in respect to whatever we are whatever fields we are working on in and uh, saying that uh, uh, you know when we talk about ecosystems when we talk about work it is all connected be it you know the, your industry be it your system in which you are working to your personal self of mind body and soul to the ecosystem which you are living in everything is interconnected and even if there is a disbalance in any one of the aspect you will see that there is going to be a stress in all the 
the the entire ecosystem be it your work be it your industry be it you yourself and also the ecosystem in which you are working and this is what we also saw during covid because you know there was a time when we used to actually worship mother earth and uh, we soon realized how disconnected we were uh when we actually face the situation of covid and uh, saying that uh, i would like to end my presentation with a very famous quote by mahatma gandhi ji wherein he said be the change you want to see in the world and um, you know we have to be leaders in our field we have to be the impact makers in our field and we have to you know actually motivate more people to bring about a change because once people see you making a change they they will automatically resonate with your uh, vision with your work and will automatically come forward to help you uh, to help you in your journey uh, of solving you know any problem be it related to society or related to the environment or uh, maybe uh, you know they would look forward to collaborations um with this i end my presentation and would love to uh, you know collaborate on different opportunities be it related to social uh, cause or related to the sustainable development goal incorporating the coexistence of the environment and the ecosystem in which we are thriving thank you so much thank you ms meena that was a wonderful speech do we have any questions for her any questions from the audience or from the hey, absent so have any questions may simply unmute yourself and speak no questions from yes. any participants or any of our fellow speakers okay no issues by the way i really like your idea megna and i appreciate the work that you are doing for community empowerment especially the one that you are doing for women that's actually a Thanks. example where in people could come and contribute for the social work it's very rare that yes. we actually meet such entrepreneurs and that's the reason we have this conference series to provide you all of that this thank you so much okay so uh, i would request you to please share your email address in the chat box and if any of our audience has any questions or seeks out further information they can reach out to me all right let's move ahead and i would request ms martha to share her thoughts with us Ms. Martha. Ms. Martha. Okay. I believe she is having some network issues. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm here. Just I'm waiting for my uh, husband to come home to take care of my daughter. Uh, can I uh, start in ten minutes? Sure, sure. No issues. Oh, uh, we can go ahead with the next speaker till then. Yeah. Okay. No issues. Thank you. Okay. I would request Miss Marthi to share her uh, comments, her speech, and share her thoughts with us. Uh, are you talking on mute, ma'am? Uh, I'm audible. Yes. So, are you telling me for presentation? Yes. Okay? okay. Thank you so much. Just give me one minute. I'll start my presentation. Give me one. Can you see my slide? I'm audible. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, even yesterday I was there. It was a wonderful session, a very thought-provoking, very insightful session. So I'm Madhvi Jha Prasad. Uh, I'm a social entrepreneur and I'm a founder of Ahana Heritage Foundation. In Ahana, we work with uh, heritage artisans and try to preserve all different forms of 
uh, arts indian arts so first i'll talk about uh, as a social entrepreneur what kind of positive change with personal growth and fulfillment so with the economic revolution globalization and liberalization and privatization uprooted the small business of these artisans and snatched their market the potential of handicrafts lies in the ability to create economic opportunities for artisans preserve cultural tradition and promote sustainable practice these crafts attract tourists contribute to a cultural exchange and other market opportunities opportunities locally and internationally uh, it is very important as a social entrepreneur to uh, to understand the significance the important significance of our heritage artisans heritage artisans these artisans they play a very crucial role in preserving cultural tradition and transmitting ancestral knowledge through their craft they are the custodians of intangible cultural heritage keeping alive traditional technique and skills that have been passed through generation their work work not only contribute to the preservation of cult- cultural identity but also foster a sense of community pride and cohesion Uh, it is very important for us to understand as a social entrepreneur how we can empower these artisans they preserve our heritage they preserve our different kind of all art forms so empowering heritage artisans involve preserving traditional technique involving market access ensuring fair trade practices offering skill development and providing financial support by supporting these initiatives artisans can thrive preserving cultural heritage while securing sustainable livelihoods and by in doing so all these are not doing them a favor but helping ourselves by ensuring a circular economy and preserving nature there are multiple of case studies which we have experienced over past years that how the social entrepreneurs uh, they help these artisans to uplift and uplift themselves their social level uh, the lifestyles so there is a very interesting case study which i am going to share with you all this is a case study that's about a okai brand is launched about okai this is a okai brand is launched and managed by tata chemical society for rural development in promoting handicraft of gujarat uttar pradesh and west bengal in the process of empowering rural women with livelihoods this really increased how they benefited their economically artisans after doing this on okai artisans are earning a monthly income of rupees 500 to 11000 depending on the hours they work at home to the center the skill levels and design difficulty the idea is to ensure that the women can work at their pace and at their home while managing their households around 400 families benefited from this rise in income levels with the average family size in okai mandal being 7 to 8 members okai has helped to improve the economic condition of around 3200 people directly it also helped to increase their social status women's role in decision making both at home and in the village has increased as they have become financially independent they have become agent of change in the village various exposure visit to relate work sites have increased their outlook on life it has boosted their self confidence the outlook of the villages towards their women has undergone a major change they get more respect from from family members as well as from the members of their village no uh the other thing which is very important when we talk about uh, as a social entrepreneur getting a uh, uplifting these artists and what are the challenge and the solutions so the biggest challenge we face is the limited access to resources and market another challenge lack of recognition and appreciation for heritage art form maximum people of our country nation especially the young generation they are not aware about the different art by kind of art forms we are having every art form is depicting a beautiful mythology so as a social entrepreneur it is our duty to make people aware about a uh, uh, such a glorified different kind of art forms so how we can do it the solution is like collaboration with ngos government and business to create market linkage with provide training and support awareness campaign that's what we do in ahana we create videos we through social media we'll try to circulate it 
we always try to tell people the essence behind every art form it's not just a madhubani painting or it's just not a wadi art how it started so that th that is very important to cre create awareness camp events and educational program to promote understanding and appreciate of traditional art i think it's the time not only to pay them back but to preserve preserve our history and culture collaboration is again a very important part when we talk about uplifting these artisans and preserving our heritage so we should collaborate with government supports corporate partnership and ngo partnership uh, even as a hana we we have a collab we collaborate with uh, multiple organization where we gifted people all these different kind of art forms like shola pet uh, we gifted people madhubani painting and all so as a noted uh, it's a very interesting as a noted by handloom senses 2019 and 20 the online channel contribution was only 2% of to 0.2% of total sales of handloom viewers uh let's come to the conclusion that is how as a social entrepreneur can do help uplifting these all these art forms and empower these artisans so handmade is a future this is a very bold statement but true why because today's environmental problem will ultimately require a new circular economy based on sustainability durability and excellence social entrepreneur plays a vital role in uplifting heritage art forms and making them more sustainable engaging local communities in the preservation and promotion of their heritage empowering them economically and culturally developing sustainable business models that support artisans and craftsmen while ensuring fair wages and environmental sustainability creating platform and network to connect heritage artisans with global market increasing their visibility and opportunities for sale providing training and capacity building program to enhance the skill of artisans and ensure the continuity of traditional craftsmanship facilitating cultural exchange program and collaboration to the promote cross cultural understanding and appreciation of heritage art form leveraging the technology for marketing e-commerce and skill and skill enhancement while preserving the authenticity and uniqueness of heritage art form advocating for policies that support the protection and promotion of heritage art form of local national and international level by combining entrepreneurial spirit with social and cultural value social entrepreneur can contribute significantly to the upliftment and sustainability of heritage art form there's a very famous african proverb which i really like that the sun does not forget a village just because it is small so thank you once again for inviting me it's a wonderful experience i'm learning anything from me i was actually a uh, spontaneous this came to me i was not prepared that is my time for the That's presentation totally fine it was a great uh, speech and i actually appreciate your initiatives which you took while going and meeting those artisans on the ground and understanding the usp of their art and again promoting it out to the world because again those village men actually are good at doing something they have a particular skill set which multiple people do find out and even pay for but they are not able to get the perfect platform or the outreach right. your initiators have actually helped them get the perfect platform while yeah. forecasting the art to the world yeah. that's actually great now i would like to invite all the participants so to put forth their questions if any to madhavi There are no questions from the participants, Madhavi. Although I had a question, again, yeah, when you actually went to meet out and interview those artisans that you just depicted in the presentation, yeah, you might yeah. have collected the data regarding them from some source, right? So, which source exactly did you like collect the data from regarding these artisans? What kind of data are you talking about? I mean, What in order to get to know that these artisans actually reside in that particular area or locality. so what we do our usp is like when we uh, the way we work we work with the artisans these art forms where the forefathers into a part of when the forefathers started this uh, this art forms of whatever okay. and the maximum of them are a national uh, award winner or a state award winner so when we talk about suppose i am from bihar and when i started i started during covid time we started this ahana heritage foundation 
so we when we talk about madhubani painting so we have a data why because we belong to that place and we went there and we asked the people we met all those artisans we see the kind the way they are working and this madhubani painting is worldwide it is very popular and especially when when you talk about your own country people hardly know about what madhubani painting is how it started and it has a beautiful mythology it is not just a painting which is started with the lord ram bhagwan's marriage and sita's marriage so that's how we and then we created a website we created a website and we told artisans you whatever you make the products like your madhubani painting and all you display your products on our website and whenever the order comes we make it sure we don't keep any uh, product with us it has to dispatch from like if it's a madhubani painting so the artisan sitting in bihar they dispatch that painting so people can collect you know it's coming from the reliable reliable sources when we talk about wali painting so i stay in maharashtra i went and meet these artisans i saw the way they are working and we said them whatever you make you give the picture will post it on the website and via social media we started creating videos we started educating people i think that's the most important part wali painting everybody knows but what is the essence how it started and why it is so important to preserve it so that's what we started creating and when order comes whenever people place an order straight away it comes goes from directly from the artisans so we try to maintain the essence of um, uh, the culture you know it's coming straight away from the artisans it has its own different kind of a feeling and we always try to put one postcard or something where they'll talk about the history of that art form so people can connect it very well that's how we started doing it that was a great presentation madam i really appreciate your efforts that you have taken in displaying the artworks this is something that people rarely do in their time you know again thank you for your contributions to this world and for your speech to do please share your email id in the chat box so that if any of our audience has any queries they can straight away reach okay. to you thank That's you so much thank you thank so much now moving ahead i would like to invite sri arpit khetan to share his screen and present his views to this world the model arpit yeah yeah thank you i'm just sharing my screen sure am i audible and visible is my screen visible uh your screen isn't visible arpit anjali is our screen visible not yet no arpit mas madhav you can uh, just stop sharing your screen because i can see your uh, ppt still yeah uh, madhav if you can just stop once i'll just again uh, share it uh, now share stop you can just share it yeah, i'm so sorry i'm really sorry thank you so much Hello everyone. Uh, I want to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude for extending the invitation for this important topic. So basically, I am not a social entrepreneur, but I am working with many of the social entrepreneurs who are making a very positive impact in the society. So I just wanted to share my overall experience and the areas where we together can work uh, for making a, a very impactful change in the society. so it's an honor and a privilege to uh, have the opportunity to share insight and perspective on such important topic so basically uh, social entrepreneurship as we uh, see in the rapid evolving world there is a new breed which is emerging which we call as a social entrepreneur it is not only emerging because uh, the people want to do a business in a social manner but it is a need of time and it is really helping the uh, society and communities for solving the very long uh, awaited issues which were not addressed and which were uh, needed much attention of the people so that we can provide a better place or better uh, means of living to the peoples so i'll just put my short uh, experience and insight on helping the social entrepreneur so how we can make a better uh, effort in this area so basically going with the definition of social entrepreneur everyone knows that what is a social entrepreneur it is a way of doing a business or doing some activity which used to address social and environmental problems so, so we generally call social entrepreneurs as social innovators because they are bringing a very positive change in the society through their work so their 
uh, issue is to their way is to identify problem and create solutions to make a difference in the society so basically why we are having a need for social entrepreneur so we should give a thought that uh, being a social entrepreneur has impact to drive significant social change unlike traditional approaches they are open to taking risks so that's why there is a need for social entrepreneur they expertise they use their expertise and innovative thinking to develop sustainable solution that ultimately benefit the society so that is one of the important reason that we should promote the social entrepreneurship india's economic growth has been impressive in the recent year but it is has not been inclusive there is a significant gap between rich and poor and many marginalized community are left behind so this social entrepreneurship promotes to uplift that part of the society it also uh, have a important role in promoting inclusive growth by creating opportunities for the various marginalized community so india like other world also faces significant challenges in air water pollution deforestation and other social and environmental issues which can be addressed through social entrepreneurship as we have seen that during the previous few years or era we may say that the social entrepreneur has significantly raised there are many new entities coming up which are doing significant job in the field of various environmental and social impact so the need of social entrepreneurship is accordingly adjusted to the needs of the society innovative solutions in india ecosystem is more sophisticated in the world giving multiple possibility to connect with local partners to learn and pursue innovations solution to one of the india's social challenges in the field of education agriculture healthcare and rural is needed also social entrepreneur being a form of business are blending profit so basically they are able to create a value to the society by having a blend of profit and purpose this dual focus on profit and purpose challenges the conventional notion that financial success must come at the expense of societal well being also it is empowering community communities that's why it is a powerful tool uh, for creating environmental changes uh, basically as we have many social entrepreneurs speakers which are having insight on their valuable work i would like to touch upon an important pain area where the social entrepreneur faces uh, issues that is the financial sustainability because running a social entrepreneurship without revenue or uh, without any break even is a very hard task they have issues of funding they need funding to run their social ventures to start their ventures and impact on the society also it is always a question how do we measure the success of a social entrepreneur so measuring the impact in case of a monetary term is also issue for them also there are many market competitors which creates a competition to the social entrepreneurs so they are again having the market challenges for survival there are many legal and regulatory barriers also which a social entrepreneurs is supposed to expose to and comply with so we need to have some training and literacy given to the social entrepreneur in this specific area so that they can better sustain and comply with the norms also working in a social entrepreneur everyone is not attracted you offer a job in a big four or big mnc company people are attracted but working for a social entrepreneur you have to have like minded people who can devote their times and have a ability and aim to create a impact and a change in the society also running a social entrepreneur is also a important task which need to be pursued till the goal is achieved and it is benefiting the society so despite these challenges social entrepreneur is playing a vital role in addressing social and environmental issues obviously there are obstacle but uh, nowadays we are having multiple area where we find uh, significant uh, promotions and help by the government and other like minded people for evolving this kind of uh, social entrepreneurs 
So basically, as I am a chartered accountant, I am actually aware of the importance of financial management and accountability. However, the scope of our profession extends beyond mere numbers. We do have supported many of the social entrepreneur in their startup journeys, which are doing a social work. We supported in many ways for uh, having them stand beyond the monetary terms to help benefit the society. As a chartered accountant, we have unique role to play in supporting and empowering social entrepreneur. Uh, we uh, also work with many of the social entrepreneur in their journey of. Uh, having a social impact and we do support them in all kind of financial literacy so our aim is that we do pass this knowledge to every social entrepreneur so that he can have or she can have the uh, in, in, enough knowledge to in uh, comply with the various uh, sustainability norms for accounting so that the journey is smoother and uh, easier for them Accounting practices for social entrepreneurs, I like to put few uh, uh, points here that what accounting practices a social entrepreneur should adopt. I will suggest that they should have a clear matrix defined that what are their social impact indicators which are they are going to achieve, have their budgeting done, have an impact measurement framework, have the data for the works they are doing for efficient management of their social entrepreneur, allocate resources, dedicate staff time and impact measurement activities, use technology and data systems to enable to comply with the various data norms and accordingly present their uh, outcome to the society. I also uh, like to put an important remark on integrated financial impact reporting. Impact and sustainability reporting is a new reporting uh, which is being developed apart from the traditional reporting that we are having. In India, even we have the reporting, sustainable reporting standards also, where there is a guidelines for how to report on the success or development of a social entrepreneur. So all these uh, issues need to be understood by a social entrepreneur to better work in his uh, journey of social entrepreneurship. Also, there are various stakeholder reports that need to be prepared, presented and that help in transparency for a social entrepreneur to present to his investor or a society. That is one important aspect that a social entrepreneur should have. And also there is a continuous improvement. Once you start, then you grow, then accordingly you can upgrade your accounting processes to have a better uh, business organization or a social entrepreneur. So basically, the main issue which a social entrepreneur faces is the funding. So today we will discuss few funding uh, criteria or funding norms where social entrepreneur can have the uh, access to their funding needs. So basically nowadays many social entrepreneurs are having funding from very philanthropist and grants are there available by the government and non-government organization. Many of the companies are providing grants to the social entrepreneur for starting their journey. So they should have their uh, uh, pitch deck ready, have their presentation ready and they should access, present their ideas for funding to this various option available to them so that they can have uh, very useful funding available from this sources. There are impact investments, where there are impact investors who are in, in, investing in the impact uh, organization there are debt funding also available in India. There is in the next slide I will be speaking on the social stock exchange that is very innovative concept in India and the world also, which is helping the social entrepreneur to have funding raise. There is crowdfunding also available. Many of the social entrepreneur can partner together for uh, having the funding and working together so they can financially support and strategically support each other for supporting this social entrepreneur journey. So having this homework done at a social entrepreneur is definitely will help them in their journey for funding and social entrepreneur prosperity. So basically I was asking that uh, there is a uh, India, there are many organizations which are NGOs registered in India. So 
the government of india has launched a special feature a special facility for such kind of ngos for registry so there is a concept called social stock exchange in which like a capital market you can list your ngos non profit organization in the stock exchange where you can attract donors all over the world to invest in your ideas it is a very compliant platform government regulated which is a new change or i will say a story change in the journey of social entrepreneurship which is now helping the social entrepreneur to raise the funds this is a very innovative idea and a facility which every social entrepreneur should look like so basically uh, there are many kinds of uh, social uh, stock exchange facilities available for investment like uh, we call as zczp it is a zero coupon bond which is a innovative security which you can do, uh, invest in again there are mutual funds which are available for investment again now give to give you a historic data almost 30 to 35 uh, non profit organization ngos in india have registered on the social exchange social stock exchange and out of them eight have successfully raised more than 8 crore money from this social ex- stock exchange this is very significant improvement in the field of funding to a social entrepreneur so this is very uh, welcome uh, remark welcome movement i will say that by the government to promote the social entrepreneurship that is helping all our society by raising the fund through this exchange medium for social entrepreneur then again uh, i'll put some important light on what i think that uh, there should be ethical uh, consideration for social entrepreneur that they should uh, follow because people are trusting them they are helping the society so to have a society societal impact and profit making uh, the interception they need to have some ethical consideration for their organization that is that they should align their mission with the goal they should present and update the people of their achievement they should keep their transparency in accounting they should have all the financial management decision making process take relationship uphold and visible to the investors so that they can more likely to get funding from various organization again they should have input from community member listen to their needs of concern and collaborate with them to create social solutions that will impact sustainable and environmental responsibility so this is what actually a social entrepreneur should have also being a social entrepreneur doesn't help uh, you need to market yourself and communicate that you are doing a social work nowadays digital marketing digital impact is very much important many people get influenced by the uh, digital marketing or digital uh, presentation so social entrepreneur should adopt to this means of uh, reaching to a larger public so that they can help a more uh, and more people in this regard so this i want to state on the ethical consideration then to conclude i will just let's say that social entrepreneurs evolve over years and given us innovative and profitable ideas so basically like india there are many developing countries in the world which have numerous opportunity to collaborate with each other so once we have more literacy more transparency and we are able to spread this knowledge to larger section of the society we can definitely collaborate with each other to have a social uh, bonding and uh, partnership to ultimately help the targeted social or subject we are looking for so the need of our is a nourishing ecosystem for social entrepreneur to take up program bridge pandemic induced gap scale up existing initiative and be uh, part of a main response system so with this uh, i end my presentation thank you okay i would like to thank you for your presentation that was a great speech and secondly as you said in the beginning you are not a social entrepreneur but again cns cns professionals are the ones who have
for the moving ahead i would like to invite ms martha balant to share her speech and insights with all of us i hope i'm audible martha okay yeah. uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, uh, can you hear me well good okay uh, so thank you so much for uh, this opportunity finally <laughs> i am here uh, my husband also sends uh, his apologies yeah, so I'm late, but now Hi. now my daughter our daughter is uh, also <laughs> safe <laughs> <laughs> fine and happy uh, so uh, i would like to share my screen if you agree uh, just because uh, I have something uh, uh, else as well uh, just to make sure that uh, uh, we have a, a nice conversation uh, let me see all right green okay that's the one all right. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, social entrepreneurship's uh, transformative impact on society. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, I believe that social entrepreneurs are really important in the world because without them, without us, the world uh, would stay as it is. And we definitely need to improve our surroundings and our environment and also each other's lives. So I, I'd like to start with this uh, quote. Uh, this comes from Bill Drayton, who founded Ashoka, uh, and says that uh, social entrepreneurs are not content just to give a fish or teach how to fish. They will not rest until they have revolutionized the fishing industry. Uh, I can, I can uh, agree with that. Uh, I also have uh, this in mind, that I will not stop until I help the one who asked for help, uh, and I will not stop until I can teach others to do so. Um, there are several examples uh, in the world where people, ordinary people, uh, with just a small act of kindness or just one little thought, uh, started something and it could go big and it could improve others' lives and made, made happier moments in each other's lives as well. So first of all, I would like to test your knowledge uh, in a funny way. Uh, I hope uh, you know uh, and read uh, Hans Rosling's Factfulness uh, uh, book. Uh, that's a really mm, fantastic book about facts and how we perceive our, our world, how well we know, uh, how well we know where we are heading. I believe as a social entrepreneur, we definitely need to know uh, the world in order to, to create the best solutions which fit into the current world. Uh, so out of this uh, 13 official uh, um, questions, uh, what actually um, Mr. Rosling made, uh, I selected one and I would like you to to uh, answer this question. I'm going to read it. Uh, there are two billion children in the world today, uh, aged uh, in, in, uh, like one month to 15 years old. How many children will there be in the year of uh, 2100? according to the United Nations. A is like 4 billion, B, 3 billion, C, 2 billion. If you, um, if you can uh, uh, just write in the, if you can just write in the um, chat section, I would appreciate that. Uh, which do you think? I somehow I cannot hear you. Oh. Okay. Just let me see like uh, what else. Oh. Has anyone has anyone uh, answered? Mm, no, not yet. Okay, never mind. Uh, then let's uh, let's go back the, to to the
to this uh, okay right sorry there you go so uh, according yeah. to Hans Rosling uh, no, mm, so okay yeah uh, can you hear me well um, so according to um, this question uh, uh, how many children will there be in the year of uh, 2100, um, according to the United Nations? Uh, the answer is C, which means like 2 billion. 2 billion uh, uh, children uh, equals uh, far more adults uh, than, we know, than we know that we have now. So, uh, for example, if we are uh, social entrepreneurs who are building something today, we need to consider the fact that in almost like 70 years there will be more adults uh, aged like 16 years between the age 16 to 75 years than children or than other people uh, who age uh, more than uh, 75. Um, therefore we need solutions which can be lasting and can uh, solve problems today but also can solve problems in the future i i am uh, just uh, continuing with uh, this uh, example uh, this uh, you might have heard about um, the microfinance model um, it, it was um, it was introduced by uh, Mr. Yunus, who, uh, who also was awarded the uh, Nobel Prize in uh, 2006, uh, um, because uh, he discovered that poor people cannot have loans. They cannot reach any kind of banking services in rural areas of Bangladesh. Uh, and he thought that if he can uh, loan for example, seventy-five dollars or of his own money to individuals like five group of a, a group like five people, uh, and then ask for like really small installments, uh, weekly installments, which can uh, be planned ahead. Then probably uh, his investment, like his loan, could pay off, and that's what happened. They uh, set up banks in rural areas in Bangladesh where one bank office would uh, take care of 20 or 25 villages uh, just to make sure that all the villagers uh, can have access uh, uh, of uh, banking services. And they made uh, microloans to these people. They selected groups of five and basically, uh, out of five, they granted uh, two, two people uh, in, in a five-people uh, group uh, loans. And as time, time went, uh, all the loans were uh, paid off. And that helped so many people, so many women, uh, uh, for example, to start businesses and also just to make sure that they, their children, they can go to school, they can go to the doctors if they need some medicine and so on. Uh, so uh, this uh, initiative, which started in 1976, uh, then uh, it could actually result in reduction in poverty rates and also improving uh, living standards. There is another uh, example which I really like, um, that's the Fairphone uh, example. Uh, they are a Dutch social enterprise and uh, they uh, make uh, smartphones. So, well, uh, there are so many big companies who are making smartphones, but they cannot see, uh, cannot say, let's say, that uh, they are conflict-free. Um, Fairphone can actually state that they are conflict-free, even if they also do their mining so, uh, but they can still uh, create products that last longer uh, normally uh, phones what we can uh, uh, buy in stores 
and they also take care of their uh, workers because they have like fair uh, labor practices. They also encourage uh, the reuse and the repair of their fair phones, which means that they have like very easy solutions to replace certain parts of the phone if the phone is getting older or getting too used. Uh, as uh, we know now, uh, more than uh, 83,000 uh, lives uh, were impacted since they started their operation in uh, 2017, uh, which is, which is, I think, something really, really nice. Uh, that means that uh, children uh, and families in Congo were safer, and also the environment uh, were preserved as it is, uh, as it is. And uh, the, um, the awareness of uh, these uh, supply chain issues, where we have uh, uh, have like very big amounts of uh, um, problems or like uh, other issues, like political or or uh, economic uh, or environmental uh, problems, there uh, then uh, they could uh, also be reduced. Uh, there is an example uh, uh, who. Uh, I I am really uh, happy to share. Uh, you probably heard about Ashoka. Uh, well, they are in uh, different countries, and uh, their uh, model is to support social entrepreneurs all over the world. Uh, which means, like, if they have this uh, social entrepreneurs network, which is a global network, then they introduce uh, social entrepreneurs to each other and. They partner with corporates, com companies, uh, schools, universities, and they make like education, knowledge, practices, uh, how to build uh, uh, something from uh, zero to like a 100 participant business. Uh, they also believe in like everyone, everyone uh, change maker uh, world. Uh, and that's why you can find uh, uh, them everywhere. Uh, which means like they are presented in uh, 90 countries. Uh, these examples are so uh, nice, but as you can see, they are very different. One is from the banking industry. The other one is like uh, um, helping uh, miners uh, to do uh, to live uh, a better uh, life. And then uh, here's Ashoka who actually supports all those who who gather just to to help. Uh, other people or to help uh, uh, other uh, other solutions uh, come to life. Um, to uh, continue, I just want to uh, give uh, some of examples uh, because as a social enterprise we also have our own solutions to uh, support uh, our partners uh, who are mainly uh, NGOs, foundations, charities, uh, and also we help communities and uh, directly individuals. Uh, what, we, uh, what we are doing is like we bridge the, bridge the gap between those companies, corporates who would like to help and, uh, and those who are, ne are in need of help. Uh, and thanks to this role, we can um, create a transparent way of giving which means like we can see what is needed, who is in need and how, how it can be solved. And we can work together with both sides, uh, with corporates and also uh, with NGOs, foundations, the other side. Uh, we have some uh, nice examples. Well, for example, we can encourage like workers of a um, big firm uh, to do wall painting uh, as like um, a team building activity. Uh, and uh, come together and then uh, uh, make sure that this children's home where uh, we, uh, we have orphans uh, is like more colorful and more joyful thanks to these uh, paintings. Uh, or uh, we uh, had like um, organized a football match uh, with children, uh, children living in uh, deep poverty and the celebrities joined uh, just to be there and uh, play football with them. It, it was a really nice uh, day, and uh, I still have uh, I still have really good memories. And also, we invited uh, a couple of uh, sports clubs uh, um, 
uh, coaches and these coaches were looking at uh, these children who were playing uh, football and the, the talented ones were invited afterwards uh, to perform uh, their football skills uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a match, um, like a trial uh, match. Um, afterwards, uh, well, uh, there are also really nice occasions where cooking is uh, the main uh, event. Uh, because uh, volunteers can be uh, involved in these kind of activities. Uh, and also uh, there are uh, families and, uh, and people all around the world where they cannot uh, uh, have like certain foods on their table, but we can organize teams to be sure that uh, these uh, precious uh, meals uh, will be on their table too. Um, well, uh, to, to end my uh, presentation, I would like to ask you uh, just to have something or do something like a small act of kindness uh, today and share it with me. Um, because I believe if we uh, do something today, then we can have a better tomorrow. Uh, I, I invite you to do something um, as small as like opening uh, a door for someone or um, picking up a litter on the street and uh, uh, just make sure that it goes to the bin <laughs> um, or anything else, uh, what you like doing, uh, I, I would love to hear from you. Uh, so please contact me and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Have a wonderful evening. Firstly, that was a great speech, Marta. I need to appreciate your efforts, whichever nation you are from, whichever nation you have made the efforts in, respect of that. The initiatives you have taken are really praiseworthy. They do need a lot of appreciation. So firstly, I really actually appreciate it because again, feeding poor people or reaching out to them is again a hectic task and very rarely we do see people trying to do those stuffs whereas mostly we do encounter people who are working on their self-development and career so that's a great initiative again again i would like to request you to share your email id in the chat box so that if any of our audience has any queries they can straight away connect. that was a great step by the way Marta. congratulations on that for the moving ahead i would like to invite miss priyanka to share her speech and insights with all of us. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, you are. Um, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, 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 good evening. Um, it's really overwhelming to see so many change makers you know, on, on the platform together. And uh, again, the, uh, the best part is that we it's, it's just not a one day event. I think over a period of three days, we are just deep diving into understanding the role of social entrepreneurship from various, various perspectives. And uh, again, like not confining it to India, but uh, taking it global, um, really appreciate uh, the initiative. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me today. And uh, today I will be speaking on uh, the, you know, like, again, like in social entrepreneurship, I think, you know, with the past three days, we, uh, we, you know, we will be discussing about the basics and, you know, the different, different areas, okay? So I would want to uh, focus on uh, the role of the social entrepreneurship in driving positive change, very specifically with respect to the healthcare sector. Because um, healthcare sector is one of the most key areas where innovations can play a great role. And uh, that's what we truly believe that how, uh, you know, how the social entrepreneurs, because all the social entrepreneurs, I believe, are 
um, you know, they, they're driven by the motivation of creating a change in these uh, society. And how do we do that? Is is this you know uh, linking the innovation, whatever you you know you you uh, invented or uh, come up with some new product or device, uh, linking uh, linking that to the last person in the society and making sure that the technology is actually of a great use. So. Uh, let me just start with my uh, short presentation on this right now. Uh, just give me a minute. So you're able to see my screen, right? Uh, yeah. Can somebody just yes, yes. Anjali? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, so, yeah, so today we'll be speaking on the role of social entrepreneurship in driving positive change in the healthcare sector. The first part. Okay. Now, who is a social entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is driven by you know, not only uh, with the motivation of uh, making profit, but the main uh, agenda for them, or main motivation, is to create a social impact on the society. Okay? And uh, in this area, like the social entrepreneurs with their innovations, can actually address the gaps in the healthcare delivery system and innovation. So there's a huge gap which is um, there you know, in the healthcare system and if the, you know, the social entrepreneurs um, you know, can identify that gap and you know, plug in uh, those gaps with the innovations, uh, that, that's actually going to create a lot of impact. The second, uh, okay, so let us just now discuss about a few healthcare innovations by a few social entrepreneurs. So, um, just you know, these are few small, few case studies which um, you know we. I mean, I have closely worked with all these people over a period of time, and uh, if, so I'm not a technical person, uh, you know, to understand all the devices, the specifications, and everything. But um, at the moment when I uh, when I got when I spoke to these founders and uh, saw their passion about you know how these devices can actually either save a, a person's life or uh, you know, improve the recovery. Uh, it, it actually uh, was very, very uh, surprising for me that you know there's so much value addition which the social entrepreneurs can actually bring in, and uh, you know like it's our duty to ensure that these social entrepreneurs are being encouraged as much as possible. So I am a social entrepreneur, and I also help a lot of social entrepreneurs around me to um, you know connect and network. So let's just uh, speak about your few healthcare innovations. So um, at the start, we have Nemocare, which is an IoT-enabled wearable uh, device, which just had to be you know wrapped onto the uh, feet of the child, and it's completely non-invasive, and it can it can monitor the key vitals 24 by 7. And there have been there have been cases where the kids they either went into hypothermia state or went into sepsis state. And the doctors were able to, uh, you know, predict with this device even hours before the child would actually, um, you know, show those signs, show, um, get into that attack. So this is one innovation. And uh, the second one is Hemac. Um, Hemac is an intelligent phototherapy device which addresses the neonatal jaundice in kids. Right now, the uh, the the you know the phototherapy devices which you have in the um, hospitals, um, they are either you know uh, of, a, of a standard intensity, and uh, manually the nurses have to come and they have to shift every few minutes. And also, whenever the baby is taken out for feeding, even those few minutes, few uh, yeah, few minutes uh, of phototherapy is lost. Okay, so this is another device which you know it, it gives the phototherapy uh, three sixty degree to the child. And also, they have a portable, um, a portable phototherapy one, which the, it can be just uh, you know removed and put it underneath the child, and while the mother is feeding. So it's, it's like it helps in the sooner, uh, faster recovery. And the third is, uh, it's oh, this is very interesting. So the physiotherapy uh, was you know the, the he this innovative the social entrepreneur. He, what he observed was that physiotherapy was quite monotonous. And uh, it was very, uh, it was not that motivating for a patient to, you know, uh, uh, do phototherapy on its own or, or just follow the process. So, 
uh, these innovators they came up with a gamified uh, therapy you know uh, device uh, where there will be some games coming on screen and um, at a some levels depending on the uh, the, the patient severity and uh, the recovery which they, you know one could see in like months they were able to see the recovery in few weeks so that was like quite an interesting one. and on the and the last one um, last of all that we have right now um, as we all know ventilators are very expensive right now in india we are importing from um, from abroad from various countries abroad and that's the reason if anybody goes on ventilator you know the price the cost per day is pretty high so uh, they, these are um, you know iot enabled icu ventilators portable and cost effective which are very perfect for a, a rural setup especially where um, getting access to uh, life saving critical life saving devices are very rare so this this is another one so all these innovations were actually developed by iit hyderabad and um, it's these devices have been doing great and they've been uh, you know combined under the csr program by us and uh, uh, they've been deployed into rural hospitals in various um, various um, you know states like few in telangana and few in andhra uh, under the csr program the social entrepreneurs have been the, their innovations have been supported by the by these uh, private companies through these initiatives and all these innovative devices have been deployed in the rural hospitals so that the quality healthcare is being provided to the people over there so i think that's the that's the most motivating factor for a social entrepreneur when their devices are actually reaching out to uh, uh, being you know uh, reached or uh, being deployed to the last person in the society and they being able to use the uh, uh, the innovation for their betterment of the health so the next thing which i would like to discuss is uh okay so the world the cio went on um, 7th april we celebrated the world health day the theme for this year was my health my right and almost 140 nations uh, have healthcare as one of the fundamental subject you know fundamental duty where the the government is supposed to take care of the uh, people around them, the people in the country uh the social entrepreneurs are so committed and motivated in helping us achieve the global goal and addressing the sustainable development goals also so all these initiatives the healthcare uh, you know, to the entrepreneur the social entrepreneur especially in healthcare uh, they are striving to create to provide quality healthcare for all next moving on to the next one um I think the reason for the social entrepreneur for becoming the you know driving force of you know creating this positive change in the in society, we need to have very strong collaborations or the uh, strong ecosystem to encourage them. Especially social entrepreneurs are very different from the normal entrepreneurs, and that's why they need uh, you know more support. They need more empathy, uh, you know. To to take to take their initiatives or take their uh, you know, innovations to larger deployments. To, um, so why are business can be achieved only by you know, only by collaborating and uh, having great partnerships? So the collaborations can be between the social entrepreneurs, the healthcare professionals, the governments, and the NGOs. So a successful it, it's very important for even the NGOs to incorporate. You the you know these these devices or the uh, innovations which the social entrepreneurs are bringing in, encourage give them constant feedback because uh, most of the time the feedback uh, is not being properly reached to the uh, innovators and uh, that's when uh, you know social entrepreneurs struggle to understand like where, where exactly they're going wrong. Okay, so a constant uh, you know feedback either from the NGOs or healthcare professionals can be a great help. in uh, boosting the morale uh, of the social entrepreneur and okay so as i have previously mentioned so we uh, so i am a csr consultant and i help the uh, the, uh, the social entrepreneurs uh, in connecting their innovative devices services as a form of the csr you know connect them with the csr projects and we help in the deployment 
So one of the big, uh, one of the key partnerships which we got was uh, IOS with, was between IOCL, which is Indian Oil Corporation Limited, and um, uh, CFHE, which is Center for Healthcare Entrepreneurship, under which all these devices were being de- developed. So under the CSR collaboration, what we did, um, wherever IOCL wanted to conduct its CSR activities, which is basically wherever their pipelines were going, um, you know, underneath. Uh, in those key areas, key areas of place, in uh, key areas of their operation, uh, they wanted to do something in the healthcare system, healthcare uh, uh, domain, uh, and also do it innovatively. You know, not like just giving some ambulances or some uh, you know some beds or bedsheets, something like that. Not like that. So there really are you know there are corporates which are encouraging a lot of innovators to come ahead and you know uh, help them out. So. Under this, uh, you know, project, we were able to successfully collaborate the uh, CSR company and uh, also the uh, the social entrepreneurs who had these innovative devices. So, firstly, we used to do a need assessment, need analysis of um, these localities or uh, locations where they wanted the deployment to happen. Understood. Uh, we met the DMOs, the district, ma- you know, medical officers, the the, uh, the district magistrate, and everybody understood what is the Key problems, which are healthcare issues, which are going around, and uh, depending on those issues, we used to, um, you know, get back to our social entrepreneurs and see, like, you know, whose uh, solution would actually better fit into this in, in this area. And uh, accordingly, we collaborated, and it was such a successful collaboration that uh, we were able to provide, um, like, in, in our first project, we were able to provide the low-cost ICU ventilators uh, to an aspirational district. In uh, aspiration district in Andhra Pradesh, which is Vijayanagaram, um, for a normal small district hospital, and uh, the, the this innovative products were you know were able to be deployed in the um, in, in that hospital, and uh, the people are now in, in that area now they are able to access quality healthcare. So, what started with one project in like two years back has now multiplied into like three more. And uh, likewise, we've done such collaborator uh, collaborations in Telangana also. So again, you know, again, you're working with the social entrepreneurs, their innovators, <coughs> their innovations, and you know, deploying them in the uh, PHCs, uh, district hospitals, community healthcare hospitals. So this is a very um, you know encouraging. Um, it is very encouraging for the social entrepreneurs because when they're able to you know practice this. Uh, the like ha- practice uh, arrangement of how they can actually contribute to the society directly. So this was one example, a uh, few examples which we did, and uh, coming to the next part, the final uh, part of the speech. Um, there are a lot of op- challenges and there are also a lot of opportunities for for social entrepreneur. Uh, given the case, when you compare. With the normal entrepreneur, I think social entrepreneurs have a little more, uh, you know, uh, challenges. Um, so it's very important for us to understand um, and be, uh, you know, be very, very dedicated to the path which which you have chosen. Because uh, being a social entrepreneur is not that easy. Um, I know we are driven by uh, driven by passion, and it's equally very important um, to stick on that path. And not give up. Uh, people are luckily, you know, with such kind of conferences coming around, and you know, there's a lot of awareness also around about social entrepreneurs, and a lot of uh, systems have been, um, you know, coming up. Also, uh, a very a new concept. I don't know if you, if social entrepreneurs are the uh, who are listening to uh, to me today are aware of it, but there's a new concept called social stock exchange, which the government has recently set up. Uh, to support the social entrepreneurs and the NGOs, okay. so raising funds was also very one of the most uh, you know because I one of the most uh, challenge for the social entrepreneur. So this system, so this mechanism of you know social stock exchange, which is um, already existing in seven countries across the world, uh, India has again India has adopted um, to start its own social stock exchange. And uh, it's doing great. It's it's still in its nascent stage, and uh, people are still in trying to you know figure out like how to take the advantage of it. But uh, this is a new area where 
I think the social entrepreneurs can take a note of it and um, be ready um, because the government and the ecosystems, everybody is you know trying to uh, encourage a lot of social entrepreneurs uh, and you know, social innovators to come up and um, uh, you know present. So because it's it's only the technology um, which is going to help up in scaling up. So that's one of the most important thing which you should take note of. It. So this um, so this is my speech, and uh, if anybody wants to you know connect with me, this is my the, you can just scan the QR code. That's my LinkedIn LinkedIn profile, and uh, that's my email ID. And if you want, I can also share it in my um, in, in the chat also, so you can just go through it. Thank you so much. That was a great speech, uh, Priyanka. Your efforts are also quite appreciated. This has one query for you, right? When you talk about like supporting women or your people generally, and since the name of your venture is Earth Samarth, so I am expecting that the meaning is helping people economically. How do you help out entrepreneurs economically? Like, do you connect them with investors or provide out any investment support, or maybe for freelancing women who want to be freelance content writers, freelance designers, freelance musicians, something like that? How do you exactly help them? Okay, so um, as, as you rightly decoded, Artsama does mean that. I'm very, I'm uh, pretty happy that you're the first one to, you know, not ask me the meaning, but in fact, tell me the meaning that I know that this is the meaning itself. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, again, the uh, the key thing, which uh, answering your question, like how, how do we help? Um, see, I, from, um, so I, I basically actually did my master's in social innovation and entrepreneurship. And since then, I've been very, very inclined towards social entrepreneurs and social innovations. I always had this thing, you know, even when I was doing my master's that there are such great technologies, there are such great innovations which are available, you know, even like indigenous innovations, if you see great minds, great technology. But why is it not reaching to the last person in the society? Why is it not, you know, being confined to only the... the tier one or tier two cities and you know the technology why does it remain over there why does it go below that okay so what we do right now is we connect the social entrepreneurs to the csr companies okay so csr is a new csr is a concept which was started a decade ago uh, called you know corporate social responsibility where the companies have to you know uh, spend two percent of the net profits for the benefit of the society, there are some list of activities which they have to, you know, um, spend on. Okay. Now, luckily, after a lot of amendments in that schedule, in, in that schedule, there are there is, there is an eligibility for the incubators, uh, technology business incubators, and uh, you know, innovators like, like the um, I think the IITs and IIMs or wherever the innovations are, tech innovations are happening or the researches are happening, they are now eligible to receive those funds. Okay, so it is indirectly actually helping the social entrepreneurs to boost and you know to do conduct more and more research and help. So what we do, we uh, so not many social not many CSR companies are also aware that how they can actually support the startups. So whenever they whenever we tell them about these innovations, they'll be like, no no no, but you know as per CSR we can only give money to NGOs. You know we cannot uh, support the startups because it's a private entity, right? But what we again, you know, we, we, we try to educate them that, see, it's not that you're directly, you need to support the innovations. You need to harness the innovation culture and entrepreneurship among uh, the children, or you know, right from college, school, you know, this needs to be a part of your curriculum. So there are a lot of CSR programs right now, you know, who are trying to uh, ignite that uh, entrepreneurship spirit and uh, you know, help even the social entrepreneurs create a value in the society. So, what we do, we just educate the CSR companies that listen. These, these, these are the innovations. So you want to create an impact in the healthcare? We have an innovative program through which you can actually either, you know, uh, uh, digitally uplift the PHCs in the rural areas, okay? Uh, make them equipped with the latest technology, which not even maybe the cities have. You need to provide that quality healthcare service system, right? Government cannot do everything on its own. So wherever those gaps are there, 
and where CSR feels that you know that yes, I would want to create an impact um, in, in a healthcare system in particular district uh, area. So we try to connect, we try to uh, you know connect them to these hospitals and understand what's the current need over there, and then uh, depending on the need, we recommend the social the social entrepreneur the innovations, the social innovations, whatever the social entrepreneurs have come up with, and uh, design that into CSR program. So in this way, see, there is it's it's win-win for the CSR company because their money, any of it's a statutory obligation. It's not something which, uh, you know, they're just doing it for the sake of it. Nothing like that. They really want to create an impact. To be honest, I mean, I've come across a lot of CSRs which they really they like. We don't have expert team who actually does that, but we want to, you know, utilize our money properly. Okay, so they have money they want to utilize, but they. Again, don't know where to, you know, uh, how to support and where to support. So, again, there are social entrepreneurs on one hand where they might be, you know, making some good sales by, you know, just uh, selling the product to the uh, tier one or tier two cities. But there, you know, the main motivation, if you see, or the main uh, driving force of the zeal or happiness they will derive only when their product is reaching out to some tribal area make some you know some uh, to the last person in the society we could shoot a small tribal area where you are able to reach out to someone or maybe in a small rural area you could have so that's that's when the true happiness uh, or the feedback happens for a social entrepreneur that's what i mean so we try to you know connect that so i have like a repository i create a repository of uh, you know social entrepreneurs working in different uh, thematic areas a uh, few i have in healthcare this was like so i am very passionate about healthcare and i have done like a lot of projects in healthcare that's the reason i thought maybe uh, you know the other me being very generic about social entrepreneurship uh, you know the role of social entrepreneurship and how it's driving a positive change i thought you know I'll let me keep it very specific to healthcare so that all the healthcare innovators who are there who are listening to us today uh, they, uh, they they know like you know how they can actually contribute back and what are the uh, modes or how they um, would be encouraged to better, so they can definitely reach out to me, and uh, you know this this gap of they want to create an impact but they don't know who to reach out to. So this Still, really, that's great initiative that you are taking, Priyanka. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I would like much. to request you to share your email ID in the chat box. So if any of yes, our audience yes, has any questions, so seek further info, they can connect out. That was a great yeah. initiative. Okay. Thank now, you so much for the. Yeah. Now, as we come to the close of this remarkable conference session, they would like to express our heartfelt appreciation to each and every one of you. The knowledge shared, the insights gained, and the connections made in this session have all contributed to the success of this event. We are truly grateful for all of your participation, and we also request all of you take a moment to provide your valuable feedback and reviews on our Google locations. You can simply go to Google Map. You can search out for SK Associates and Group and drop a review. Whether it's a criticism or a praise, I would really appreciate. Your inputs and thoughts are highly appreciated again, as they will help us improve future events and continue delivering high-quality conferences. And obviously, criticism is the only thing that helps a person grow. So again, it's highly appreciated. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Take care and do return. And join us tomorrow for the third session of Conference 3.2 on the role of social entrepreneurship in driving positive change. Thank you. Thank you so much.